It's a good day to brew, baby. What is up, YouTube? It's your boy, Millsy, like a hometown commander. And we are back for another episode of Millsy Brews, the show where I give you my version 1.0 deck list for the commander in front of me on my quest out through your favorite magic channel. Man, Martial Machines has been so good to me. I hope it's been so good to you. I've had a lot of fun brewing some decks around some of these new commanders. There's so many new commanders, so many new flavors and deck lists to try. And the commander sets, to me, have been really fun so far. A lot of them have had either really cool new commanders, uh, really cool new mini commanders in the decks, or really cool reprints of uh, previous commanders. So a lot of these pre-cons, I think, have good value. Today we're looking at Castle of the Broken Halo, 3 blue, red, white for a 5-4 with Convoke so your creatures can tap to pay for a colorless or a mana of that chosen creature's color in a mana cost. That's what the whole deck's built around, Flying Vigilance Haste. Whenever you cast another spell that has Convoke, scry to then draw a card. Um, I think on paper, Castle of the seems like a really interesting commander, but I think the more that I built this deck out, the more that I realized that I, I think as much as I like Castle as a commander... There are a couple other Jeskai commanders that probably could just do this uh, strategy a little bit better. And the one that I came to really just think that could do this better is, is Kaikar Wind's Fury that, that comes in the deck. It comes in this precon. So if you buy this precon, you get a copy of Kaikar. I think Kaikar does this strategy better because it, it helps you produce tokens better. I think Castle Right, if you want to play Convoke, you have to get tokens. And believe me, we have no issues in this color combination of making tokens. Don't get me wrong. But I like that Kaikar is a card that straps itself on itself. It already has a way to make tokens. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you, you make a spirit with, with flying, and then you can you can sack the spirit for red. The cool part about the spirits, uh, just, just to further drive home this idea, Convoke is tapping them. So you tap them for Convoke, and then you can still sacrifice them for the red mana. But what I wanted to do was still try to make Kazla work. It'd be easy to just take the cop out and say, oh, you bought the precon? Screw the face, Commander. Pick this separate one. Um, you know, last week we talked about Rashmi and Ragavan, and it was because the deck was completely different from what uh, Gimbal was trying to do. Um, we, b before we looked at um, we looked at Siddhar Jabari, and even its sub commander is still trying to do a very similar thing. But we chose to take Siddhar uh, Jabari, and then with the um, plus one plus one counters precon. Shalai and Halar still deals with plus one plus one counters. It just takes the route, uh, the deck a completely different route, right? And, and I chose to brew around that as opposed to uh, Bright Palm. But in, the, but in this deck, I, I wanted to keep with Castle because I generally wanted to see what I could do with it. I think more often than not, as commander players, we take a look at a commander and we go, well, that commander's not very good. I like this other commander better. I'm just going to use the precon to do X. And what I wanted to do is say, okay, it's easy to just say, I'm just going to do X. But what could I actually do with the precon? Like, what could I actually sit down and brew? For this precon, and I think I did a pretty good job, and I and I'm interested to see what you guys think down in the comments of this castle deck. Pretty basic, um, pretty basic land land base. Let's let's get up into the enchantments. I think the enchantments and the artifacts are still where this deck's going to shine, and that's why I think I like uh, Kai Card just a bit a bit better. But let's let's look at what access we have. The single best, um, the single best enchantment in this deck. I, personally that I think exists is Jeskai Ascendancy. It says whenever you cast a non-creature spell, creatures you control get plus one, plus one to turn, untap those creatures. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you may draw a card if you do discard a card. With this Convoke strategy, we cast the spell, we Convoke it out or whatever it may be, and then we untap every creature we have and they get plus one, plus one counters, on, plus, plus one on turn. What this is basically going to let us do is convoke all our spells out and then still attack, still deal damage with our creatures. Um, just guy said it seems like a dangerous card the more cards that we cast, right? Any non-creature spell, so we've got sorceries, we've got artifacts, we got enchantments, we've got battles, although we're only playing one battle in the deck. Think about this, eight or nine mana, we play four or five spells, all of our, everything's plus five, plus five, and they could still attack and deal damage. I think Just Guy Sentency is such a crazy card, and it's going to be really good. Along the same route, we have Intruder Alarm. This is creatures you don't untap during your controller's untap steps. So this is going to help punish our opponents a little bit in combat. And then we're going to take advantage of the second ability. It says whenever a creature enters the battlefield, untap all creatures. Well, look at this now. Every time a token comes in, which is going to be very hard in this deck because we have so many things that just make us tokens outright. Well, when those tokens come in, bam, we untap all of our creatures. Now we can convoke again. The biggest problem this deck has, I'm just, I'm just going to tell, I'm just going to tell you off the jump. The biggest problem this deck has is we don't have enough things that can convoke. So we'll convoke and we'll happily convoke, but we still have to build a decent 
you know, token deck at the end of the day. We can't we can't just rely on Convoke to win us the game, although it will help us win the game. We, we still got to build the tokens and around them. So almost every support card in this deck is either making us tokens, making our tokens better, or giving us to our to value of tokens. Only procession, doubling the amount of tokens we make. Assemble the Legion, get to get us a token every turn. The the the, the, the good part about Assemble Legion in a deck like this is, we don't mind that they don't have haste if we don't have anything out to give them haste, because they can just tap to invoke. And the more that we get, the more they're going to get uh, better. They also really fit into this impact tremors and perforos plan, which, which we'll talk about as we go. City on fire can get convoked out, and we want to convoke it out. And then we get this beautiful ability: if a source you control will deal damage to a permanent or player, it does triple that damage instead. Combat damage, regular damage, everything gets tripled. And city on fire is one of our ways to end the game because we're going to have a lot of tokens. Those tokens are going to attack and help us in the game. Elemental Master, you put this on a big creature, tab, get X, 1-1 one, one red. Creature tokens with haste for X is the number of creature, or that creature's power. So put it on a big creature, get those tokens, they can attack, they can convoke, and then you exile them at the end step. I like Elemental Mastery because it's a great way to kind of give us some things to convoke, but also just give us some attackers if we need them. Uh, Feldar Retreat gives us either a Cat Beast token or a plus one, plus one counter on each creature we control, and those creatures get Vigilance, which is huge. It's so good to get Vigilance in this deck because we can attack first and then convoke after, which I think is really beneficial as much um, Vigilance as we can get. Impact Tremors, which we'll talk about. A little bit of Perforos when we get up to the creatures, but whenever a creature enters battlefield or control, it deals one damage to each opponent. Perforos is two damage. So we make a ton of tokens every time we're doing these things or, or playing these cards or doing these things. And um, creatures, though, whenever we make a creature token and it pings our opponent, it would get tripled by City on Fire. But I think Impact Tremors is probably our best win con for the deck other than just running our opponents over in combat. Tangible Virtue, all of our creature tokens get Pulse and Pulse on in Vigilance, which is great. We're playing the Mystic Remora and Rhystic Study to help us draw because... We don't have a ton of ramp, right? Being in Jess, guys, we need to draw, and these two cards are going to help us do it. Prosperous Partnership is one of my favorite new cards uh, for a token deck. When it comes in, you get two one ones, and then you can tap three untapped creatures you control to get a treasure. Well, here we go. We don't have Convoke out. We don't have Convoke spells to play, but we all have a bunch of these vigilancy tokens that we don't want to block with. On a, we wait till our opponent's turn, let them attack, block if need be, and then on their end step, tap a bunch of them to make treasures, and now we have a bunch of mana out going back into our turn, which is great. Roar of Resistance, all of our creature tokens have haste, and for two mana, we can give plus two, plus zero oh to the whole crew. This is one of my single favorite enchantments of the last few months. This card is bonkers good. And in a deck like this that can make a ton of tokens, Roar of Resistance is the exact clarity that we want. And then Swathering Tide. Stuff like Part of Process Partnership and Smothering Tide in this deck is so expensive because remember, we don't have land ramp. So we need extra mana. We need the mana to play our spells, get our tokens out, and potentially end the game. Uh, for Mana Rocks, Arcade City, or Chromatic Lantern, uh, Canter of Endless Water for the no maximum hand size, which is great. Soul Ring, our three talismans. And then Wand of the World Soul, which is one of the new cards. This is a card we probably want to make sure we get every game because it's just going to help our deck so much. It comes in tapped, taps for white, but it can tap to make the next spell you cast this turn have Convoke. And it says this turn, so if you have any way to untap this, you could potentially use it uh, every turn. But this card is bonkers good for this deck any spec spell has convoked no matter what the cost is and if you use this at the right time uh, i think this is just going to end up potentially winning you the game or making you so many tokens that you can push through or with this impact tremors uh, perforos model we can make a ton of tokens off a big x spell and just potentially run out a game depending on how much convoke we can have this card is so good it has such good utility for that bottom ability and at minimum it's a three mana mana rock halo fountain has a potential way for us to end the game. Five white mana and untap 15 creatures. To tap the creatures to win the game. Well, we're trying to convoke. We're trying to attack. So that's going to be pretty easy. We can draw cards and get tokens. Halo Fountain is such a fun token card. And I think it works even better in a deck like this. Where we're already trying to do it anyway. Skull Clamp can help us kill our own little creatures and draw some cards. Horn of All Hollow. On its sorcery side, it's just X11 tokens, and then it comes down and makes a creature bigger for the amount of tokens we have. And I think one of our other linchpin kind of winning cards is Throne of the God Pharaoh. So when at the beginning of each end step, each opponent loses life equal to the number of tap creatures you control. Well, hopefully that's a ton of them, whether they're attacking or tapping for spells. It's going to be one of the cards that hopefully is potentially going to lead the way and end the game. Coming up in to the Sorceries and Instants, uh, Brainstorm for some draw, Clever Concealment to help protect the board. The cool part about phasing out is it doesn't get rid of tokens. Like The bad part about a, a card like um, 
the Battle of Red card, like Eerie Interlude, which 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 uh, exiles the whole board and brings it back as if we would lose all of our tokens. So we really love things like Clever Concealment and Teferi's Protection because it just phases them out and they get to come back in. We don't lose them in the process. Complete the circuit. We can cast Sorceries this turn as though they had Flash, but the best part of this card is the bottom. Whenever you cast an instant Sorcery, the spell, copy that spell twice. You may choose new cards to the copy. I think the best target for something like this is Secure the Ways, Path of the Ghost Hunter, a Ganjo Uprising. Transcend a message. So when you copy a spell, you automatically, or Grand Crescendo, you automatically gain the value of X when you copy it. So we could convoke, complete the circuit, get as big of one of these as we can, and get three of them. Make tokens, do a lot of fun things. Complete the circuit seems like a fun card, and I'm excited to see how it works in a deck like this. Devouring Light, exile target, attacking or blocking creature for three mana, and it convokes. This is great. Can uh, take care of some things. The coolest part about a card like this is it doesn't say attacking you. So if you have an opponent who's doing something really nasty and they're attacking somebody else and you feel like that's the time to get rid of their thing, well, you could do it. You can get that thing out of the way. Flawless for protection. Generous gift for a little bit of uh, removal. Grand Crescendo can make X11 tokens and then everybody gets indestructible. So the best part about this is if we can give this Convoke or we have a ton of extra treasures or mana lying around, just make a bunch of tokens, give everything indestructible, and then live to find another day with all of our tokens. Reality shift for removal. Secure the way is probably my favorite of these x spell that create tokens just x white make them an instant speed this is like the perfect target for one of the world soul right do this on our opponent's turn tap a bunch of our stuff down get a bunch of tokens on tap with them swords for some removal to various protection we talked about already phasing our tokens out so that they're still where they don't lose them and then transcendent message to draw cards which we can tap our tokens to do um ganja uprising is one of my favorite x um token creators because it gives ours menace and haste which means if we make you know if we make five and our opponents have four they can only block two of them because they have menace or whatever it, it gives us the upside and the more buffs we have like intangible virtue and things like that the better ours are going to be versus theirs i really like it um idyllic tutor again because we we have a couple of these enchantments we really want so we want to play it um Jessica's Will for the mana, Marshall Coup for tokens, and it's a board wipe. Path of the Ghost Turner just makes those spirits with flying. I don't really care about the bottom ability, but I do care a lot about the top ability, making the tokens, and then Puritan. If there's any deck for you to play in Light and Tutor, I, I really think this is it for all of this, especially this. But I chose to try to keep this one down as much as I could on the value of the deck because I wanted to try to get a more mid middle of the road style uh, pricing on the deck as opposed to going absolutely balls to the wall on the pricing so if there's any deck honestly i'd recommend you putting a light tutor in uh, it would be this one we'll get the creatures into a second we'll talk about our battle here because i think this battle looks like a ton of fun whenever advantage of segovia enters the battlefield we get two kraken tokens with trample and then on the back side we get sadis sea tyrant sea tyrant of of uh segovia non-creature spells you can full have convoke so all of our non-creature spells have convoke and then we get in the end step on tap up to four target creatures well here we go this is our payoff and this is the reason why we play enlightened tutor as well this is the reason why we play idyllic tutor this is the card we want get it flip it on the backside. now every every non-creature spell is convoke we don't have to do any mess with one of the world so everything's perfect and now we get more of that bottom ability of cas love with a card like this and then elspeth sun's champion Plus one makes token. Minus one gets rid of everything with power four greater, which is going to be most of our opponent's creatures and probably not many of ours. We got some pretty small creatures. And then the bottom ability gives us that emblem plus two plus two with flying is just going to probably help us in the game. But all right, before we get into the creatures, like I try to do with every video, I'm going to go creature by creature through a bunch of these creatures. If you're not interested in seeing every single creature in this deck and why it's in the deck, deck list is going to be down in the description for you. Let me know what you think down in the comments, but let's get in there. Or rather the war leader looks kind of odd in a deck like this, but it's in here because if we can convoke it out, uh, we're going to get a lot of really cool things. It has haste, so we got to attack the turn it comes down and we get an extra combat. The cool part is that we can tap all creatures we control. So if we convoke it out and then attack with it, we're going to attack all the creatures that convoked it and they're going to get to attack as well. So with an intangible virtue, with a with an Elspeth emblem, with some of these attack buffing type things, bam, we get a first attack. We untap everything that convoked, we get another attack. And so Aurelia could potentially help us just end the game with that second combat or just hurt a bunch of opponents. Benny Brax is probably a, is a pretty expensive card, but it, it seems kind of fun in this deck. Um, convoke, so we can convoke it out with our creatures. But it says at the beginning of each end step, if you created a token this turn, draw a card. So every turn we could potentially draw a card with it, depending on what we're doing or what, what, what uh, abilities we have. So I like this. Um, 
if we can find a way to make tokens on all of our opponent's turns, well, then that's great. We're going to keep continuing to draw cards. But worst case scenario, we will always draw a card on our own turn. Drum Bellower is one of the another perfect creature in this deck. At the beginning of all, um, each player's untapped step, we untap all creatures we control. So if we have, well, right, if we have the backside of our battle out, now we can convoke things on everyone's turn. But what I like about this is it's just going to let us attack, even if we don't have Vigilance, or if we have Vigilance, then we tap them for convoke. Now they're going to untap on everyone's turn. And it's just going to lead to um, a lot of really great situations where we can now just block and attack for free. Flock Chaser Phantom, six mana with Convoke, and whenever it attacks, the next spell you cast this turn has Convoke. Well, here we go. There's another way to just enable Convoke on the spells that we may potentially want Convoke to be on. Interdisciplinary Mass got a big boy, but it has Convoke. Ward three, when there's a battlefield, look at the top four, put one into your hand and the rest on the bottom. This is probably my least favorite Convoke spell in the deck, but it has Convoke, and it could be important depending on what... Um, abilities we have this probably would be my first uh, creature of these to cut joyful storm sculptor which is from the set when there is when there is battlefield we get those two one ones and whenever you cast a spell it has convoke it deals one damage to each opponent in each battle they protect so a little way to ping our opponents when we have convoke i don't expect this to happen all that often but again we're trying to really lean into this convoke game plan so let us do it we already talked about kaikar monastery mentor and one of my favorite token producers whenever you cast a non-creature spell you can make a one one monk with prowess so prowess says whenever you cast a non-creature spell that creature gets plus one plus one to only turn this card plus jeskai ascendancy um is going to make some fun board states that could potentially end the game i love monastery mentor it's one of my favorite uh, token versus especially in these um spell slinging jeskai decks mondrak another of our, our token doublers sits on a decent body and then for one mana and for life if we need to and two other artifacts or creatures we can make it indestructible get around some board wipes and that kind of thing to keep our token doubler out Keep it moving, keep it going. The Deer's Kraken is a fun card, and this is a way for us to make probably Benny Brack's to tokens on our opponent's turn, or or, uh, or or potentially, yeah, depending on what we do. Whenever you draw a card, you can pay one. If you do, put a counter on it and make a 1-1 tentacle creature token. That tentacle creature token is blue, so that helps with Convoke for our blue spells. And then the Deer Kraken gets big. But again, we just have all these tokens. Nesting Dovehog, beginning a combat on your turn, populates. Populate says... Pick a token of your choice and make a copy. Make another one. Whenever a creature token enters the battlefield, put a counter on it. So this could get big depending on how many tokens we have. If no one blocks it or no one takes care of it. But we really want that populate. Get another token and uh, have some fun. Ovika, one of my favorite uh, kind of mini commanders in the deck because... Uh, depending on how we get set up, we can just start making a bunch of really big tokens, making X goblin tokens with haste where X is the mana value that spell. This is another perfect target for like elemental mastery because you're going to make six of those tokens per turn and then you get anything that you cast off of it. Uh, and uh, and uh, because it's just also a big body, so it's going to be tough to deal with. Perforos, the, the uh, kind of counterpart to impact terminals you talked about. Whenever a creature enters bail under control, it deals two damage to each opponent. Gets even better with something like City on Fire because it gets tripled. Uh, Saint Trapped and Rem Careless. This is the alternate commander from the deck. This is whenever it becomes tapped, create a one-one human creature, creature token. This is the first time it's resolved this turn, so that's great. Almost always, this is what we're going to get. If we untap it with something like Jeskai Ascendancy and we use it again, we make a one-one blue spirit. And then if it's the third time, we make a 4-4 four, four angel. And then whenever we cast a spell that has Convoke, we untap it. So that's great because then we can kind of tap it every time. And it being in Jeskai means we can tap it for any of those three colors of mana for Convoke. So we really like that. Seraph for the Masses. We can Convoke it out. And it's just a star star where stars number of creatures of control. This is going to get big. It's going to get big, 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 big. And I like putting something like Elemental Mastery on this because then we just get a massive amount of tokens. The Locust God, when we draw a card, we make a 1-1. One, one. And then whenever it dies, return it to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. But that, whenever you draw a card and make a 1-1, one, one, it's going to be pretty great. Because um, on opponent's turns, when we're drawing our first six study or something like that, we can make a 1-1. One, one, but it's just more creatures to tap for uh, Convoke. And so Locust God seems like a great uh, card for that. Wildfire Awakener, one of the new cards that kind of caught me off guard, has Convoke. And then when there's a battlefield, make X red 1-1 one, one creature tokens with whenever this creature becomes DAP, it deals one damage to target player. Well, this is pretty darn good, right? You put a ton of mana into this, make a bunch of these one ones, and we can vote with them or attack with them as long as we don't have like vigilance out. Now we're dealing more damage. I like this. I like this kind of card. This is a card that pays off what our commander wants to do. Same thing with Zephyr Stinger, which says when there's the battlefield, we'll put a flying counter on each creature that convoked in. 
cool part about this is we may potentially want to use like our commander to convoke this or something big to, well, I guess not because it already is flying, but some of our big creatures that don't have flying, we can now use Zephyr Stinger to kind of give them flying, give some evasion to our big creatures that already don't have it and generate value that way. So I like Zephyr Stinger. It's not a, an imposing thing on its own, but it is imposing on what it can give to other creatures. You know, think about giving flying to something like Nadir Crack and once we have it set up, um, or flying to Perforos or Benny Brax or Monastery Mentor, give flying to these things that are no one have flying, but they're going to become potentially fairly big depending on what we do. I feel like that's where Zephyr Stinger shines. Or worst case scenario, you just give flying to four tokens. And then now we have four more tokens with flying. So let me know what do you guys think of Kazla uh, down in the comments. Again, interesting deck. To be 100% honest, this precon just fed the Kai card deck that I already have brewing, and so I was excited to see some of these cards for that. But I think Kazla is interesting, and I think it might be a way for some players to kind of jump on this Jeskai tokens train without going uh, kind of completely way steep with Kai card, only go knee deep with Kazla. And it may just be an easier way for you to find your experience. But let me know what you think of the deck down in the description. Like the video if you like Kazla or you like Convoke. Subscribe if you want to join me on my quest to outbrew your favorite magic channel, and I will catch you next time.